it's a really sad day for Derby County fans and it's a sad day for football when a club, a historic club like Derby County, goes into administration and has a point deduction. So let's have a look at some of the background, a bit of a Q&A really. So uh, they found out on late Friday that they'll be automatically docked 12 points. That sent them unfortunately to the foot of the championship on minus two points, six behind Nottingham Forest. It came as a bit of a shock to everyone, but this has been kind of brewing for a while. Um, Mel Morris, the current owner, he took over in 2014 when he bought a 22% stake in the club. Local businessman, he was the sole owner by 2015, and he pledged to steer this club into a sustainable position in the Premier League. And I think this is what's tripped them up. So in 2014, Derby had lost the championship playoff to QPR, who eventually agreed a £42 million settlement with the Football League for breaching financial fair play. By that point, Morris had already realised getting into the Premier League would be very, very expensive. And they've obviously been a bit unlucky, but he's basically looks like he's gambled, gambled the house on doing that. In terms of the finances, Derby lost £14.7 million in 2016, £7.9 million in 2017, and they were heading for further heavy losses in 2018, which would have breached EFL profit and sustainability rules following a cumulative £39 million loss over a three-year period until they confirmed that Derby had bought the Pride Park Stadium from the club for £80 million. In January 2020, after review of the sale, Derby were charged by the EFL for financial breaches up to 2018. <clears throat> Had Derby beaten Aston Villa in the 2019 Championship playoff, it would not have been a problem. Indeed, given the EFL cannot enforce any action against Premier League clubs for financial breaches, it may be the charge would never have been brought. But they lost. Frank Lampard left. Philip Koku replaced him as manager and Rooney signed as a player. The extent of the losses beyond 2018 is not known because accounts are still to be published following the agreement between Derby and the HMRC that they could hold back until the EFL case was concluded. But it is accepted by all parties that they contain significant losses. So could Derby be punished further? After a protracted legal case in which Derby were initially cleared but then fined £100,000 following an EFL appeal, appeal and ordered to refile their accounts, the club were ruled to have used a method of valuing players, amortisation, that was not allowed. However, the accounts are still to be resubmitted as Derby and the EFL have been in negotiations over an agreed settlement to cover all outstanding accounts to summer 2021. It's understood a nine-point deduction has been agreed with a further three-point deduction suspended for a period of two years during which Derby must adhere to an agreed business plan. It's not known whether this settlement will be enforced as the administrators are unlikely to agree to the plan and any new owner would have to submit their own to the EFL as part of their purchase. So why haven't Derby sold? In 2019, Morris said it was his intention to sell the club. In August 2020, Derby confirmed that they had taken a loan from MSD Holdings Limited. MSD is owned by American billionaire Michael Dell and also has interest in Premier League clubs like Burnley and Southampton. It has been established a consortium headed by Swiss financier Henri Gabay made a substantial payment to Derby as a loan with the intention of completing a formal purchase of the club at some point in 2020. The consortium began to have doubts over uh, once the EFL brought its charges. Once the impact of the coronavirus pandemic became apparent, it backed out. The loan was subsequently repaid. Twice after that, Derby agreed, uh, confirmed an agreement was in place for Morris to sell the club. In November 2020, a deal was struck with Daventio Holdings, a company set up by Abu Dhabi business BZI, which is run by Sheikh Khalid, a cousin of Man City owner Sheikh Mansour. In April 2021, an agreement was reached with Eric Alonso, who had been working with Sheffield Wednesday owner Jafan Chanziri. Both times, proof of funds were not established to the level 
to satisfy the EFL owners and directors test and both deals collapsed. Morris had been talking to other potential purchasers but realised that there was no prospect of an imminent sale. Having lost, by his own estimation, £200 million of his own money on Derby, he felt he had no other option than to put the club into administration. So what will administration bring for Derby County? A conservative estimate of Derby's debt puts them between 50 and 70 million, including an outstanding amount owed to Arsenal for Polish defender Christian Bialik, who they signed for 10 million pounds in 2019. They also owe the HMRC in excess of 20 million pounds, ouch. In addition, they're losing about 1.5 million pounds a month. Player wages, the most significant outgoing at any club are due this week. A source with detailed knowledge of the administration process said the first task for the administrators will be to work out how to pay the salaries, as the players can leave for nothing if they're not paid within 28 days. Late payment of wages can also trigger a three-point deduction, although this can be suspended. At Wigan, the EFL club that went into administration in June 2020, they were able to raise funds by selling players. Derby's problem is the transfer window does not open for another three months. In theory, they could sell players now and ask for payment immediately, but they couldn't be registered to play for anyone else. After that, the administrators will need to establish the full financial picture to show to a prospective buyer. They will speak to supporters, local council and the EFL. Crucially, they'll try to reduce losses by cutting expenditure wherever practically possible. This will also certainly mean redundancies and some agreements with external companies being cancelled. If the club do not pay 25% of the money they owe to non-football creditors, they'll be liable to a 15-point deduction. Derby were already under a transfer embargo which severely restricted Rooney's ability to bring in new players last summer. Even if they sell players in January, they could only replace them with players on short-term contracts. So, what about Rooney? In addition to the obvious financial issues, there's also significant compensation payments to former manager Philip Koku and defender Richard Keogh to pay. Koku was dismissed in November 2020 with an estimated payout of four million due. Keo won his appeal in May against his dismissal for misconduct and it'll cost Derby another 2.3 million, yikes. And then there's Rooney. Although the bulk of his wages was paid by sponsors 3-2 Red, in a recent BBC interview, which he apologised to the fans, Morris said that the club were paying Rooney a competitive salary. Given his status as former England captain and his country's goal scorer, record goal scorer, it's assumed wage, Rooney's wages will be high. The 35-year-old said at the weekend that he had no intention to quit. His contract runs to summer 2023. So what about Derby's future? Speaking to BBC Sports, Wickham owner Rob Kuhing, whose side were relegated to League One last season, but would have stayed up if Derby had been deducted points last season, offered a bleak assessment of the situation. Quote, People say somebody will come in and buy it because it's Derby, he said. But how many points will Derby be faced with being deducted this year? More saliently, they're going to be faced with further deductions next year. In likelihood, you'll be buying a League Two with an accumulated debt of 50 million. There are only so many people in the world out there will be willing to do that. There are some fans who fear no one will commit to such an undertaking and the club could be liquidated. Others feel that, an, that, it, that it is an impossibility, not least because a creditor like MSD would lose so much money. Supporters are rallying to the cause. Incredibly, Derby sold their initial allocation and then some to take 2,000 supporters to Bramall Lane on Saturday against Sheffield United. On the 29th of September, they entertained um, Reading at Pride Park. Some close to the situation feel the latest developments in the Derby, in Derby's unhappy recent past that they at least allow the club to clarify their position, debunk some of the conspiracy around them and begin to move forward. But today, amid so much uncertainty, that feels like a long way off.